Welcome back. This is Craig. We're going to talk about the clone stamp tool to help us continue to restore our old black and white Abe Lincoln photograph. So the clone stamp tool can be found over here in the toolbar. Um, clone stamp tool, you can type an S if you're on another tool. And the clone stamp tool in its simplest form, let me zoom in here, it will take an area and stamp it to another one, almost like you just used a rubber stamp to stamp here and apply what was here to here. This works off of the same brush tool engine, so you usually want a little bit of a blur to it to help feather it in. We'll start with a hardness of about 50 here, and again with my brackets, left and right brackets, I can make my stamp tool larger or smaller. Make it about the same size as what I want to stamp out. And I hold my option key down and I click and that will give me my stamp and say what do I want to clone from this area to the next area. It's kind of interesting as they added this a couple versions back in Photoshop is you can see that it gives you a preview of what is going to stamp there. Now if you look closely you will see that when I hover it's not quite covering that little hair there. So I might want to just increase it, and I can do this kind of in, while I still have the, the previous sampled area, I can increase or decrease my brush size, and it increases and decreases the sampled area too. So I could stamp this out with several different stamps. To make it look closer to the background, I'm just going to do one, and I will click, and then that takes it away. Now if I want to, you see I picked up this little artifact here, I might want to take a different area here and get rid of that here and here. So the clone stamp tool also works well when you have complex areas uh, like this large scratch right here. I particularly like to use this when you have to stamp along an object that is different, like the lapel collar here and then the coat. Um, this is different. So what I can do is I can increase my stamp over here. I'll sample part of this collar and I can come in here and I can stamp away part of this. You see I'm picking that up so I don't want to do that. And I can stamp right up to the kind of the fold here where the collar folds over top of the coat. And then I can go to this side and notice too wherever I stamp it follows it, so it moves up um, as I do that. Now when I get to right here, I'm going to want to sample the very edge of the collar. So I'm going to go up here and put my tool right at the very break where the collar falls into the suit. Click once here, and notice now when I come down, it will bring that fold with me. So as I stamp, it will allow that fold to come with, and I see a little bit of a duplicate here, so I'm going to reduce this. I see a duplicate here, here, and here too, so I'm going to just stamp out a couple of those. So we have one, and I'm going to sample this and break this up just a little bit. You're after randomness here, so when I zoom out, I'll still stamp a few more in there, but you can see how when I zoom out the lapel here where it meets the coat, that border has been restored. It's a nice feature. You can also do this, we'll do this up here by the hairline, and I've placed a couple of scratches up here. If I take a sample right on the edge here, and as I move down, you can see I'm picking up that edge. The one problem I have here when this is at an angle, I can't rotate it. So I have to just go a little bit at a time, or try to grab a place like right in here, that is about the same angle. And as I move up there, I kind of grabbed it there. I'm just going to bump up my size just a little bit. I know I have part of that black hair, uh, but I can always stamp that out later. I was trying to match up this uh, where his forehead is here and now up here. That's not doing what I want, so we better make it a little bit smaller. Sample here, move it up, and that's getting pretty close. And now I can start to pull up or pull down 
some of this here. And now I've kind of restored that line to his forehead. And now what I'll simply do is with my clone stamp tool go in here and I'm going to work this direction as I stamp because he has wrinkles in his forehead. So I'm going to pull those wrinkles over and I'm going to match those. So a little bit of a wrinkle here. I'm going to pull that over. And I don't want to pull the wrinkle too far over. Now I can just make my stamp tool smaller and I'll fill in the rest of these areas in between the wrinkles. If I click and drag, it'll pull pull that over just a little bit too. So as I zoom out, now you can see the forehead has been restored um, nicely. And I would continue to do that into the hair, starting from the top, pulling it down, kind of random sampling. So that is the clone stamp tool. Again, um, it works really well when you're trying to follow the edge of something, whether it be his forehead or his lapel. Um, or if you're working out here in an open area, it does work well just to stamp a really large area like this to fill in an area. Oh, that looks bad. To fill in an area. Um, actually, let's go back. Let me show you what I did wrong there. Um, if you look at the background here, there's a gradient here, a little bit darker behind his head and a little bit lighter here. So by me stamping from here to here, I'm pulling the darker portion out and putting it in a lighter portion. So it's a simple fix. Just follow that gradient and click down here. And now when I go up here, I followed the gradient. You don't see the darker portion to the lighter portion. So again, this is the clone stamp tool. Very helpful when you're restoring photography, really when you're restoring anything or doing anything that you've um, cut up, built, or you're trying to composite in Photoshop. I hope this helps. Thanks.